bright duty every student matters once again i am here with chapter number 13 executive in parliamentary system in this chapter we are going to learn so many things that is the meaning of the executive types of executive president of india position powers of president of india actual position of the president the vice president prime minister council of ministers ministerial responsibilities power and functions of the governor and the chief minister central government structure of india that is your legislature executive and judiciary and executive what exactly is it a system of government having the real executive power vested in a cabinet composed of members of the legislature who are individually and collectively responsible to the legislature may have a prime minister elected by the legislature this is the actual administration starter the term executive is used in a broad sense to indicate the branch of government responsible for the implementation of laws and policies made by the legislature in this sense it includes not only the head of the state the president the king of the chancellor but also the ministers governors and the whole mass of administrators who constitute the bureaucracy of the civil services the organized organs of government are legislature executive and judiciary and all these three are interlinked and this is also checks and balances too because they keep on eye on each other whether each organ is working properly or not executive gives effect to the laws made by the parliament and executive is the branch of government responsible for the implementation of laws and policies adopted by the legislature forms of executive are permanent executive and political executive Pre political executive are presidents prime ministers ministers who are responsible with framing of policy and they have a particular tenure also but civil servants they are the permanent one those who are responsible for day to do administration that means they implement the policies made by the political Uh, uh, executives and they have a particular tenure but which reduces at the time of retirement only no one says that they have to leave the job because they are permanent one now the political executive and permanent executive have few differences also like political executive are elected by the people so how they are elected this is the first word and they are appointed by the government so that means this is a selection procedure selection process is your first point they are makers of law and policies that means their job profile what they do is they make the laws and the policies and they are in charge of execution who implements who execute so this is their job profile they are elected by the people and can be changed in the next election that means this is the tenure but here they are permanent and remain in the office even the ruling party cannot change them so this is the stability political executive is the core of government consisting of political leaders who form the top of the administration presidents and ministers prime ministers and cabinets governing without an assembly a constitution or political party is possible but ruling without executive is impossible now indian parliamentary system see this is legislature and indian parliament system has a president who is a head of state it also has an executive branch it comprises of pm cabinet ministers and the administrative machinery and it is called the government and it owes to origin to westminster system and the legislature is a bicameral register which is rajya sabha and lok sabha it is not separated from and the government is accountable to these two houses it could initiate no confidence against then parliament executive in india why to ensure that the government would be sensitive to republic uh, 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 sorry expectations and would be responsible and accountable a government that would have strong executive branch but at the same time enough safeguards to check against the personality cult and autocracy the parliamentary form provides many mechanism that ensure the executive will be answerable to and controlled by the legislature or people's representative article 741 says that there shall be a council of minister with the prime minister this is the council this is the prime minister this is his 
counsel so that he can consult with them who shall in the exercise of his functions and in accordance with the such advice provided that the president may require the council of ministers to reconsider such advice and the president shall act in accordance with the advice tendered after such reconsideration now what is the role uh, and functions of the civil servants that means the permanent executives giving of advice and influencing the policy policy making is a function of the government or the council of ministers but it falls uh, uh, to the lot of the bureaucrats and secretaries and the other officials to analyze the problems and collect necessary data on the basis of such information the civil servants render their advice to the ministers and uh, uh, the administration is also uh, uh, like function by them when a policy has been decided the minister issues instructions to the secretary in charge of the department to implement the policy and the secretary conveys the instructions to the subordinates and it conveys uh, 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 the secretary and the secretary wing the state officials the district authorities and the other staff have the duty of enforce the policy and program of the government and expeditions and honest implementation of policies is the test of an efficient administration now what is the uh, objective like developmental role so to develop the uh, equality of banking system in india and what is rbi does it performs a wide range of promotional functions to support national objectives to establish financial institutes of national importance that is uh, nabdar then idbi etc the main components of executive are the president vice president prime minister and the council of minister and the bureaucracy that is the permanent one now president of india is from 1950 to 1962 rajendra prasad and 1962 to 67 was sarvapalli radhakrishnan 82 to 87 gani zelchin 77 to 88 neela sanjeev reddy and 74 to 77 fakruddin ali ahmed 69 to 74 was a tenure of vargaguri venkatagiri and zakir hussain uh, worked for 67 to 69 from 87 to 92 Ramaswamy Venkataraman in 92 to 97 was Shankar Dayal Sharma 97 to 2002 KR Narayanan and 2002 to 2007 uh, Dr APJ Abdul Kalam 7 to 2012 Pratibha Patel and 17 to present uh, sorry then 12 to 17 was Pranam Mukherjee and 17 to present is Ramnath Kovind List of all presidents of India Dr Rajendra Prasad S Radhakrishnan Zakir Hussain Bagri Venkatagiri Vakruddin Fali Ahmed I have uh, discussed all in the previous slide and the president of India Shri Ram Nath Kovind administering the oath of office to Shri Justice Natulal Pati Venkata Raman as a chief justice of the Supreme Court of India at a swearing in ceremony in Rashtrapati Bhavan on April 24 2021 Now presidents elections are indirect elections as we know we all participate in the process of elections and we choose our own government but that is we are talking about the executives but here the president is an indirect election and that is to the direct election and electoral college elected members of both the houses of the parliament and elected members of legislative assemblies of the states and except nominated members and members of legislative council president formal uh, of uh, state and uh, he is any person who is a citizen of india completed the age of 35 years and qualified election as a member of lok sabha does not hold office of profit under government of india or government of any state or under any local authority and if we could say he can contest election for the office of the president of india and however president vice president the government of any state or a cabinet minister whether at the center or the state is not debarred from contesting the elections for the office of the president president uh, formal head of state uh, like election the president shall not be a member of either of the houses of the parliament if an mp becomes president he is deemed to have vacated his mp seat and the seat become vacant on the day he enters the office as president the emoluments and the allowances of the president decided by the parliament and cannot be decreased during his term of office the term of office is 5 years from the date he enters the office he is eligible to be elected any number of times under the constitution he can resign at any time by addressing the resignation letter to the vice president under article 61 procedure for his removal that means impeachment he can be removed at any time from his office through the process of impeachment for violation of the constitution in case he violates the constitution under this circumstances he can be impeached for this purpose a charge must be leveled either out the uh, of the house of the parliament and it must be in the form of a resolution signed by at least one fourth of the total number of members of that house and moved only after giving a clear notice in 14 days 
If the uh, resolution is passed by majority of not less than two thirds of the total membership of that house, the matter goes to the other house, and that investigates it. The president shall have the right to appear on to be represented at such an investigation. If, as a result of such investigation, a resolution is passed by majority of not less than two thirds of the national, uh, sorry, total membership of the other house which investigated the charge, stating that the charge can be sustained, then the president stands removed from his office from the date of which such a resolution has been passed. Here you could see uh, the news report published in the Times of India, October eight, two thousand five, Bihar resolution unlawful, says Supreme Court. And uh, this is the law versus justice. The ruling proclamation dissolving the Legislative Assembly of Bihar is unconstitutional, despite unconstitutionality. The present is not case where, in exercise of discretionary jurisdiction, the status quo ante deserves to be ordered. Now, the powers of the president appoints PM, Council of Ministers, judges of Supreme Court and High Court, Chief of Army, Navy, Air Force, and various high officials. These are the executive powers. Then military powers. He is the supreme commander of the defense forces. Power to declare war or peace is in hands of president only. Legislative powers. He is an integral part of the parliament. A summon or prorogue address, appointment, nomination, decision on disqualification, prior consent for important bills. Bill cannot become law without president's assent. And judicial powers also. He can reduce, cancel, change death sentences ordered by court. He is the only one who can change all these jurisdictions. And emergency powers are also in the hands of president because in emergency provisions are contained in Part 18 of Constitution of India, and the president of India has the power to impose emergency rule in any or all Indian states if the security of part or all of India is threatened by war or external aggression or armed rebellion. Discretionary powers, very important powers. He can send back the advice given by the Council of Ministers and ask the Council to reconsider the decision. In doing the President acts on his or her own discretion when the president thinks that the advice has certain flaws or legal lacunae that it is not in the best interest of the country. The president can ask the uh, council to reconsider the decision, and uh, these powers also include that he has the veto power. Also, that means he can question anything or he can object anything, withhold or refuse to give assent to bills. And other than money bills passed by the parliament, every bill passed by the parliament goes to the president for his assent before it becomes a law. And the president can send the bill back to the parliament asking it to reconsider the bill. This veto power is limited because if the parliament passes the same bill again and sends it back to the president, then the president has to give assent to that bill. Formally, the president appoints the prime minister, and normally in the parliamentary system, a leader who has the support of the majority in the Lok Sabha would be appointed as prime minister. And in case of a deadlock or confusion, the president has to decide whom to appoint the prime minister. According to Jawaharlal Nehru, we did not give him any real power, but we have made his position one of the authority and dignity. The constitution wants to create neither a real executive nor a mere figurehead, but a head that neither resigns nor governs. It wants to create a great figurehead. Powers and functions of the vice president. The vice president of India, after the president, is the highest dignitary of India, and certain powers are attached to the office of the vice president. These are: vice president shall discharge the functions of the president during the temporary absence of president due to illness or any other cause due to which the president is unable to carry out his functions. And qualifications are: any person who is a citizen of India has completed the age of thirty-five years is qualified for election as a member of Rajya Sabha does not hold office of profit. Elections uh, procedure of vice president is elected indirectly. He is elected by the members of an electoral college consisting of the members of both houses of parliament in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. And the vice president shall not be member of either house of parliament. And what are the functions? He is the ex officio chairman of Rajya Sabha. He presides over the sessions of the Rajya Sabha. Right of casting vote in the case of equality of votes. And he acts as the president in the absence of the president by reason of his illness, resignation, or death until a new president is elected or enters upon his office. His tenure is five years from the date on which he enters upon his office. He may be writing under his hand an address to the president resign his office. The vice president can be removed from his office by a resolution of Council of States passed by a majority of all the members of the Council of States and agreed to by the House of the People. The vice president can be re-elected as president can. These are the list of the vice presidents of India.